Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Artur uh, Smolyaninov. He's a well-known Russian actor. Uh, he's starring in, in a new movie called uh, The Jews, directed by Dmitry Fix. Thank you very much for uh, being with us. Thank you for inviting. Nice to be here. Uh, you were uh, once uh, acclaimed in Russia, including uh, by the president, Vladimir Putin, but you've now been designated by Russia as a foreign agent. You were forced to flee uh, your country. Uh, the reason for that is that you've publicly opposed the war in Ukraine, and you even told in an interview uh, that you would be ready uh, to fight in this war, but not with Russia, with uh, Ukraine. Uh, before that, you were not known as someone who was uh, engaged in political views, at least publicly. What happened? What happened? What happened? Because this is this is the red line. After you, you after you, 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 you need to speak. You can't be silent. You can't say something. Because when you see that, you know, for me it's normal. Because my mother like teach me like that and my life teach me like that that if you see the that someone is uh, in trouble you need to help it because for me you know the the the, prob the question is not nationalities the question is this is fighting for freedom like it doesn't matter ukraine or someone else or some another country this is fighting for freedom for me and that was the moment the starting of the war that was the moment when i understand that this is the end of my freedom and I started fighting for my freedom. This is why I feel that I need to speak. Right. Uh, but most R Russians uh, are staying silent. Is it because they support the war, because they support Vladimir Putin, because they're afraid? I don't know. I'm not a politician. I don't have a real statistic because I, I think nobody have it now. But uh, I feel, I feel, and I know my, my friends and the friends of my friends, uh, especially in Moscow, of course, because capitals is also the different uh, than uh, all another country uh, so I think that people just care because there are two most big value valuables in the human's life this is freedom and life and people just care for their freedom and for their life nobody wants to lose it but I, I'm sure that most of Russian people uh, if they have a possibility to go somewhere I think that they they should go, but they can't. Right. But when, when you say, I mean, some people do oppose the war, say, I'm against the war, but you went further than that. You said, if I was to fight in this war, I would fight with Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. I see. I understand your question. You know, this is in emotions because I have many Ukrainian friends uh, and uh, I have a few friends which I, uh, which I met after the war. And when I speak with them, when they told me what's real, really going on there, you know, it's important to stay calm. It's important. This is emotions. This is normal reaction. This is intuitive instinct reaction to protect yourself. This is protection of myself. Like, I imagine that someone comes to my home and, and, and start to, to kill my family. Of course, I, I think every normal, normal human will feel the same. This is, again, this is, I mean, the fighting not exactly for Ukraine, but now, yeah, but now the war between Russia and Ukraine. But let's, uh, let's change the names. Uh, the meaning, the point will be the same. This is fighting for freedom. So, and I stay on, on Ukraine's side because they're fighting for their freedom. The, the, this, is my, this is the main idea of my life. This is the main valuable, the, my freedom, my own freedom, and it means the freedom of everyone. Mm -hmm. In Russia, the Justice Ministry, uh, as I said, labeled you a foreign agent. There was a criminal uh, case uh, open against you. I see you're smiling. Why? Because it doesn't matter for me, you know. It's like uh, uh, if uh, some someone crazy will will call you anybody, you you will you will not take it on your own. You will just go through. So, this is illegal, illegal uh, government. They really? are broke. Yeah, they are broke all the laws of our country. Just they just just deleted. Uh, I want to remind you that the president uh, give me a promise, me, all the people of Russia, the promise to protect my freedom. 
to protect my rights. Yeah, like in every country, yeah, this is inauguration calls, yes? Inauguration. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he promised, and he, then they broke all, 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 all the, all, they, uh, I don't know, is it okay to speak not very good words it's here? Okay. They have the constitution, our constitution, my constitution. So after that, for me, they are out of the law. So if they are out of the law, I don't take it on myself because they are in illegal field. But so bye bye. I don't take it on my own because it's funny for me. Who me? Foreign agent for my country. I made, you know, I made I made many good things for my country, and everyone in my country know it. How many people I helped? How many I? How many people I I I, I save? You know. I know to speak about myself, but I need to because he asked me. So the people in my country know about it, and they call me and all uh, and all the all the people who now who, the foreign agents now. Aren't you scared? Because some people me you, you, yeah not of course not no. no some people are scared by what Russian does to the people it labels foreign agents, even if they're abroad like you are. I can't speak for them. I can speak only for myself. I understand that every situation is very special, and every human is very special, and everyone feels uh, he feels it like he feels. But, but it's not a problem for me. For me, it's real funny. Like this is like really, you go to to the to the people uh, to the I don't know, crazy hosp hospital. I don't know how to say yeah, it's psychiatric it's a, hospital. Psychiatric hospital. Yeah, and someone calls you like you're a Napoleon <laughs> or someone else. Because you were funny about it. Right. Uh, the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, uh, talking about you, said, uh, no one in the Kremlin is thinking anything good about this actor. Uh, however, this was not always uh, like this, uh, because you, you became popular in, in Russia, especially uh, for a movie in which you play a Soviet soldier during the war in Afghanistan. 2005, it was... Uh, Uh, hit at the box office. It's called the Ninth Company. And after that, Vladimir Putin was very pleased. He invited the whole crew, the whole cast. And you had an encounter with him. You had a, a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, what what was it like? Yeah, this is a very, very popular question. So I, I'm already know to what to answer. So, okay. The first uh, main impression, it's, it's before, before the movie. We, we came in his residence. And he met us and shook the hand for everyone, and I was the last. And I feel very special. Um, I don't know how, when you sniff, what is it? Smell. Yeah, very special. Thank you. Uh, very special smell. I don't know what is it. This is like from uh, this book uh, called Parfumier. Par mm -hmm. par par Parfumier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's very, very special smell, which which makes you like, wow. You smell it, and it's some special. I don't know, some special perfume. I don't know what is it. This is what the first, and then after the movie, we goes to 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 have some tea, to speak a little bit, and um, for me it was very strange that almost nobody wants to ask someone. Everyone said like, "Yes, Mr. President," but for me, I, I was interesting. Who is it? Who is Mr. Putin? Yeah. So and we and we speaks about uh, spoke about Afghanistan, about narco traffic, drug drug traffic. Yeah about all this stuff, uh, and he explained me something like about Americans, that this is, uh, that they, it's all this shit what he speaks now, but then it was like, okay, he speaks something, this is politician, but the main impression, when it goes out, if you ask me, what about we're talking, I ask myself, what about we're talking, and I will tell about nothing. I don't remember anything, this is, was like a fog, you know? And in this moment, I understand, wow, this is how special service is working. You speak with human, you look at them, and in the moment, you feel something. But after that, you just forget. It's just gray color, nothing, the fog. Uh, your, uh, the, the latest movie uh, is set after World War II. It's a man who's traveling across the, the Soviet Union and he kills people uh, for a reason because they were all uh, Soviet death camp guards who collaborated uh, mm -hmm. with the Nazi. What's the message of the movie? How does it resonate with Ukraine today? I don't know how it resonate with Ukraine today because it was shooted before the war. 
and I didn't see it after the war. For me, it's also interesting. How will it will it resonate now or not? But for me, the main message is that even if you made the biggest evil that only we can imagine, anyway, you always, before your life, you always have a chance to fix it. Mm. To, to, to change something in, in your life. And my hero, he, he tried, he tried to, he tried to. But, and he, but he can't, but yes, he can, but uh, the price was his life. Mm. Just the, the last question, obviously, uh, it's complicated. If you make a, a Russian movie, it was shot elsewhere and so on. But obviously, given your situation, there's no chance the film will be distributed in, in Russia. Absolutely not. And because of all the sanctions and some of the measures, there's also a likelihood that even in Western countries, it won't be distributed because it has the stamp Russia on it. Yeah. How do you navigate all this? I don't really know because I'm just an actor. I think this question we need to, to, to ask to the producers. But as an actor, it must be painful for you because, you know... You, you know, now for me, much more painful that people in Ukraine dying. Really, it's not a, it's not just the words. It's just the movie. It, it, in the end, it's just the movie. So, if it's good movie, I think it's good movie. It will wait for its own time, and it will come. If it's not a good movie, it doesn't matter. No, war, not war. Okay, just forget about it. So. There are many, many stories, especially in the Soviet Union, when the great movies or great books was just lying like 20, 40, 50, 80 years, and nobody see it. And it, in the end, the times come. Artur Smolyaninov, I want to thank you very much for uh, coming here on the France 24 interview, and thank you all for watching it.